a quiet beach becomes a hive of activity every night. So it is a natural event you're seeing tonight, but pretty much what you're watching is penguin peak hour traffic. It's neighbours coming home. Thousands converge to watch another thousand or so emerge from the sea. It's an experience for us because yeah, uh, first time for me. First time for me uh, seeing the penguin and they are really cute. Yeah. <laughs> but they are really, really cute. <laughs> Penguins have right of way on this part of Phillip Island, just off the Victorian mainland. This colony of the world's littlest penguins has thrived in the midst of thousands of spectators. Our core ethos is conservation and being able to protect the penguins at the same time allows us with our operating model to generate revenue to protect the penguins further. Soon the little penguins will have more of their historical habitat back. A mix of state government and park funding to a total of $58 million will allow for car parks to be ripped up and revegetated and a new centre built away from the penguins' breeding grounds. Visitor numbers will remain capped as the park finds ways to keep managing the needs between tourists and penguins. We believe we've got the right number uh, from a conservation point of view and also to maintain our financial stability moving forward. For 35 years, Peter Dan has been researching the little penguins and has found that education is the key. We actually create advocates, I think, here by allowing people to come and see them in their natural habitat and explain the threats to them. And, and so we, we get a surprising amount of support you know, from the general public. 